Hey there, I'm Ari from Tech Buyers Guru, and I'm surrounded here today by a lot of high-end PC gear. But the focus of this video is actually what's right in front of me. This is the Arctic Liquid Freezer 2 280mm CPU cooler. During a recent roundup of best under $100 CPU coolers, I found that this cooler offered a lot of performance and a lot of style for the price. It comes in at $95. But I also found that it had a kind of a hidden downfall, and that is that its thickness, which lends it a lot of performance per dollar, also means it won't fit in a lot of cases. For my roundup, I actually had to move my benchmarking system from the Thermaltake A500, which is right here, to the Cooler Master H500P mesh right here. I've taken the top of this case off to show you that it actually has a special cutout for additional headroom for extra large coolers. Now, a lot of cases specify that they can accommodate 280 millimeter coolers, particularly up top, which is where I like to mount my CPU coolers so you can exhaust that hot air out the top of the case. But not all 280 millimeter coolers are built the same way. And what Arctic has done with this cooler is giving it a radiator that's about 38 millimeters thick. It's about 11 millimeters thicker than the typical cooler, which is typically around uh, it's 27 millimeters, or 28 millimeters. So what happens when you get a radiator that's this thick is that means, and also this wide, this is as wide as radiators come. Okay, this is 140 millimeters wide. It means that it not only infringes upon the back of the case, you know, you need the maximum width allocation, but you also need a lot of height allocation. And when you get both a wide and tall cooler, there's a very good chance that you're gonna hit your motherboard. And that's what happened in the A500 case. So I'm gonna actually take you up close and personal with this A500 case, which has a 360 millimeter cooler installed in it right now. If you heard that, you might say, well, if a 360 fits, of course a 280 fits. No, that's not true. And that's why I'm making this video. You have to look at the thickness of that radiator. And most cases, even high-end cases, this is a $250 case. Most high-end cases won't fit this under $100 cooler. And that means, even though it's a bargain for its performance level, it's not necessarily the cooler for, for you. So let's take a closer look at what you need to do to be able to fit a cooler like this in your case. Okay, so here we are looking at the Thermaltake A500 case. It actually has a lot of headroom for large coolers. I've got a 360 millimeter cooler installed in here right now. Let's take a look. Okay. The radiator itself measures in at 360 millimeters, but with its cooling apparatus on either side, it's actually a little bit longer. It's about 400 millimeters long. In terms of height, it comes in at, oh, just about 54 millimeters. Okay, so you've got a 25 millimeters, or sorry, 25 millimeters of fan, that's a standard height fan, plus about 29 millimeters of radiator, and maybe an extra one millimeter for washers when you have it attached to the top of your case. But let's take a really close look in here at the headroom we have. Okay, I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. All right, I'm putting my finger in between the motherboard and the cooler. I've got probably approximately five millimeters of clearance back here, okay? Now, this fits. It's not hitting my cables. It's not hitting my heat sink here. It's definitely not hitting my RAM. It works with this 360 millimeter cooler. But what if this radiator were another 10 millimeters thick? If I added 10 millimeters of width to that, ra to that radiator, it would actually impact the motherboard. It would not only hit these cables, all these fan, and these fan headers up here, but it would actually hit the motherboard itself, the PCB, all right? So especially if you used a 280 millimeter cooler because these, those are actually gonna be wider. So the Arctic cooler is actually not only gonna hang down lower, about another 10 or 11 millimeters, it actually is also wider, which means it's gonna go all the way to the back of the chassis. It's going to hit the back of the chassis and it's going to impact that motherboard. That means you need a total amount of headroom of a minimum of 38 millimeters plus 25 millimeters. Okay, so now you're talking about 63 millimeters of clearance. Do I have that in this case? No, I do not. 
there's no way I have that much headroom. That would be down to here, okay? I'm not even close. I'm about eight millimeters shy of being able to use the Arctic cooler. So let's take another look at this cooler, just to make clear what I'm talking about. Here we are at about 63 or 64 millimeters thick total for the, for the entire combo of radiator and fans. That means your minimum headroom is set by that thickness. And if you have less than that much headroom in your case, it's actually going to just hit the motherboard. You will not be able to install this cooler in that case. So let's take a look at our H500P case and see if it has enough headroom. All right, now we're looking at the inside of the H500P. I don't have a motherboard inserted, but you can see where the motherboard screws are. These three, that more or less sets the height of that motherboard. The motherboard would be just a couple millimeters higher than that screw, okay? Let's take a look at that headroom. I've got a whole extra cavity up here that goes beyond the motherboard, and I'm gonna put my tape measure at the top. Here I am. I've got 70 millimeters of headroom between the top of this case and that screw. Now, assuming the motherboard's actually gonna be about five millimeters above this, I've still got 65 millimeters of clearance. Now let's just install that Arctic radiator just so you can see what I'm talking about. I have about. barely enough space, just enough clearance in this huge case from Cooler Master to install this radiator and fan combination and clear that motherboard. It's gonna be very close, but I think it will clear the, the, the circuit board of the motherboard. So the next step will be to install the cooler in the case and show you how it works out. So the first step is to install the back plate behind the motherboard and then screw in the standoffs, which I'm doing here. I'm just doing it by hand. Then I attach the two side brackets to the cooling block, just one screw on each side. Pretty simple. Notice the orientation of those brackets. They can actually go either way, but the legs are supposed to face out. Also make sure you don't clip your wire in as you are attaching it. Don't forget, of course, to take off the tape that protects the cooling plate. I'm now going to apply the MX4 packet. I don't love these packets of paste that Arctic provides. I really love syringes a lot more, but there it is. That's about how much you should have on there. And then I'll move the cooler into position. It goes on very, very neatly. I love that there's just one wire here, not a ton of wires to keep out of the way. And then I'll attach the four screws. These are thumb screws, but you'll want a screwdriver to make sure they're fully secure. And of course, go in diagonal fashion from one corner to the next to equalize the pressure on all sides of the cooler. So you'll see then I'll go to the lower left here. And after that, I'll probably go to the upper left and lower right. Moving past this, we then install the single PWM fan lead to the CPU cooling header on the motherboard. And here we have the cooler installed. Pretty simple, it looks great. No RGB lighting, but you know what? It looks serious, it looks professional. It's an awesome upgrade for any high-performance gaming PC or content creation PC. Just make sure it fits, and it does fit in the H500P mesh case from Cooler Master. If you like this video, please do like and subscribe. Post your questions or comments below, and find out how this cooler did by checking out our full review. Until next time, I'm Ari from the Tech Buyers Guru.